Hi, I'm Andrew McCormick, head of the BIS Innovation Hub in Singapore. For many, sending money across borders can be slow and expensive. As you've heard throughout the week at the BIS Innovation Summit, there's a tremendous amount of work going on to help make cross-border payments faster, cheaper, more transparent, and more inclusive. The BIS Innovation Hub is supporting the roadmap for improving cross-border payments developed by the Committee on Payments and Market Infrastructure and the Financial Stability Board. We've partnered with SWIFT to run a hackathon focused on using ISO 20022 messaging and modern APIs to build better cross-border payment processes. This week-long hackathon ran just prior to the summit and brought together 260 participants representing over 80 countries around the world. In just a minute, I'll be announcing the three winning teams from the hackathon and showcase how their innovative solutions could help remove frictions and delays, also while making cross-border payments more inclusive. But before I do that, I will briefly attempt to explain what ISO 20022 actually is. You've probably all had the experience of sending a payment and finding that the reference field is just not long enough to write a meaningful message. That's because many payment systems use antiquated message formats that limit how much data can be included with the payment. ISO 20022 is a solution. It's a standard for payment messages that allows data-rich payments to flow in a way that's more useful for users, for businesses, and for financial institutions. This better data structure allows for contextual information to travel along with the payment and, for example, eliminate the costly and often manual processes involved in compliance checks or reconciliations between payments received and invoices issued. ISO 2022 is being implemented around the world in both domestic payment systems and cross-border services such as those offered by SWIFT. So it's time for the payments industry to get ready to take advantage of data-rich payments. The Summit Hackathon was a huge success. Our esteemed panel of judges from central banks, industry, and payment system operators had the extremely hard task of scoring 45 high quality proposals. And I wanna thank all the participants for their time, their commitment, and their hard work over the last few weeks. With that said, we are now ready to announce the three winners of the BIS Innovation Hub SWIFT ISO 20022 Hackathon Drum roll, please. One award goes to Team Mojaloop for their solution on how to use 20022 to handle the last mile, bringing cross-border payments to the many users in emerging markets who rely on mobile money transfer systems. Judges like the impact of this proposal could have on the inclusiveness of cross-border payments. Over to you, Team Mojaloop. Thank you, Andrew. It's an honor to be chosen as one of the hackathon winners. The Mojolip Foundation is a non-profit open source foundation founded in 2020, hosting instant payments clearing infrastructure as a digital public good supporting financial inclusion growth. Let's set the scene. 80% of the cost of cross-border payments is in the last mile delivery of money. Today, there are existing last mile payment networks to tap into. The mobile money industry sprang into life over 10 years ago, focusing on delivering efficient digital low cost accounts to those unable to access financial services. And there is a vibrant global diaspora who regularly send money home, as well as many donor agencies who remit social payments. Our hypothesis is that fragmentation leads to high costs and delays in receiving money when things go wrong. Our submission demonstrates how using ISO 222 messages in the Modulip APIs we're able to connect traditional market participants with the many different account holding institutions in the developing world's financial ecosystem. To do this, we map the module three-step transaction pattern onto ISO 222 messages and leverage the Interledger protocol to include end-to-end -end data elements that connect these disparate systems. The module three-step transaction pattern allows a data agent to firstly, discover if the creditor identifier they have, such as a mobile number, identifies a valid creditor account to which they can route a payment. Secondly, agree the terms of the payment with the ultimate creditor agent. And finally, execute the payment instruction. Modulip systems also use the Interledger protocol, which has a cryptographic signature called the fulfillment, which is only produced by the creditor agent when the payment is cleared to the creditor. The fulfillment data element passed end-to-end -end from the creditor to the debtor can be relied upon by intermediaries and the creditor itself as a cryptographically verifiable signal that the creditor has been paid. 
market infrastructure, such as the modulated clearing system, consider delivery of the fulfillment as a signal of finality and an indicator that the payment may be settled. Our demo. Amanda provides the phone number and the amount to Lake City Bank on our app and does a get quote. Lake City Bank, using a global discovery service, finds out that Equity Bank can play the role of an intermediary, provides the transaction details using a paying 001 message. Equity Bank does a lookup and a transaction agreement with Rwanda Pay, and then relays back the details using a paying 01. Amanda accepts the terms of the payment and proceeds. This results in a PAC 008 message being sent through Equity Bank to Rwanda Pay, with the resulting paying 002 message being received by Amanda's bank as confirmation. One can view the activity logs and view each of the ISO messages, for example, the CAMT003 here, which can be opened up and observed. Modulab uses the interledger protocol because of the finality provided by a cryptographic signature in the payment instructions. This facilitates straight through processing without the need for reconciliation and dispute resolution. It avoids the errors that result in delays and costs that poor users can ill afford. It offers first a way for the banked and the unbanked to exchange funds safely, quickly and securely. Second, confidence that payments are being sent to the intended recipient and the funds are being cleared to them. Third, transparency to all parties of the complete terms of the transfer. And finally, certainty for the debtor institution of the finality of credit of payment. We extend the reach of the ILP protocol into the traditional payment market infrastructure by passing the necessary interledger data elements in ISO 20022 messages so that they can be exchanged end to end. We further expand the use of multiple ISO 20022 messages to facilitate a complete three-step transaction, providing a traditional debtor with confidence that their payment is going to the intended recipient and trust in its finality. This submission was prepared by a diverse group of participants in the Modulip open source community. To learn more about Modulip, please visit modulip.io or feel free to email me. Next up, we have Team Atomic Wire. Atomic Wire built a lightweight technical solution for syncing FX payments. Their solution uses ISO 20022 messages and importantly, a compatible internal data model to lower the settlement and liquidity risk even for smaller institutions and across all currencies. Judges really like the blue sky thinking of this proposal. Over to you, Team Atomic Wire. Thanks, Andrew. We are Patrick Lucas and Martin Swanson of Atomic Wire. Our mission is to help the financial services industry move towards a real-time, continuous processing model using stream processing technology. We think a pragmatic approach to this is to leverage existing industry investments in asset ledgers and messaging networks. To our knowledge, we're the only firm specializing exclusively on stream processing for financial services. We chose to focus on Building Block 9 because it allows us to showcase the scalability and semantic capabilities of stream processing. If we can build a solution that can settle two or more payments atomically, we can significantly reduce cost and friction. The solution must work for low-value payments and emerging currencies and ideally be asset agnostic so we can settle any asset type, including digital assets. Our solution is based on synchronization, a model proposed by the Bank of England. The model requires assets to be reserved or earmarked before settlement and is designed to work with any ledger that supports earmarking, including central bank, commercial bank, and digital asset ledgers. The diagram shows the topology of a stream processing application that implements synchronization. Data flows from left to right, consuming settlement requests and emitting confirmations. We use ISO 20022 logical messages at the boundaries of the system and business model entities internally. This stream processing model allows for massive parallelism and scalability. This is a simple, scalable model that could be implemented immediately. It would remove barriers to adopting PVP, eliminate FX settlement risk, and improve operational visibility for regulators. Our solution demonstrates how stream processing technology combined with ISO 20022 can work with existing systems and messaging networks to build global services with new semantics. Synchronization is only a first step. Access to commercial bank liquidity pools would extend central bank processing hours and add resiliency. Multilateral netting would optimize liquidity and reduce earmarking. Synchronization could be extended across other asset types, such as securities or digital assets. We built a stream processing application using Apache Flink to demonstrate our solution. To test the capabilities of the application, we ran it on a 32-core server on Google Cloud. The source code for the demo is available on our GitHub page, so please check it out 
and see how we are using ISO 20022 concepts in a stream processing application. The README has details about the structure of the demo and how to run it. All you need is an installation of Java 8 or Java 11 to run the demo yourself. The right side of the terminal window shows the level of utilization of each CPU core. Now that the application is running, you can see that the machine is fully loaded. The first settlements are now completing, and you can see that we are hitting more than 100,000 completed atomic settlements per second, with a consistent average latency of around 2 seconds. Although we had limited time during the hackathon, we were able to demonstrate that a stream processing solution can be scaled up to support global transaction volumes, including FX and payments. This could enable cross-product netting at a scale that is not possible today. As shown in the performance chart, the throughput of our solution scales linearly while maintaining low end-to-end -end latency. The ISO 20022 business model has the potential to radically simplify application development in financial services, and the messaging layer already supports everything required to implement atomic settlement. In our hackathon submission, we made a number of suggestions for improving the usability of the standard. We really enjoyed participating in this hackathon and appreciate being recognized as a winner. If you have any questions for us, please feel free to get in touch at info at We would especially like to speak with central banks and market infrastructure providers who want to explore this idea with us. Thank you. And last but not least, the isonauts. Multiple teams investigated the issue of data correction and validation as a basis for smooth international payments. The jury was impressed that in one short week, the isonauts were able to define a realistic, well-thought-through solution and demo it conceptually using ISO 20022 payment messages. The jury thought that this could really help improve the user experience of payments. Take it away, isonauts. Thank you, Andrew. At Fachusa and Amazon Web Services, we're so excited about the potential of ISO 20022. This new standard opens up many opportunities to improve services using cloud technology. The solution we've developed here is just one example of how techniques like machine learning and analytics can improve user experience and extract more insights from data. ISO 20022 provides a rich dictionary for party details that will support faster payment processing and better compliance. However, current banking practices and local requirements will present a challenge to leveraging the rich data model in ISO 20022. Financial institutions will have to ensure not only that messages are formatted correctly, but that the data they use meets the needs of their correspondents and the regulations and market practices in the jurisdictions the payment is destined. For our hackathon implementation, we have implemented this AI engine using the AWS SageMaker machine learning framework, exposed over an API and integrated with the Virtusa payment sandbox. When presented with Payne 001 payment initiation or PAX 008 customer credit transfer message, Based on the structure and completeness of the data in the debtor and creditor postal address fields, the service can A, predict the likelihood of success when choosing a particular correspondent payment route, and B, recommend changes to those fields to improve the speed and predictability of payment processing. So let's see how the solution operates with an example PAX008 message. Here we see a PAX008 message uploaded to the sandbox and first entering the rule-based validation stage, looking at whether the message is correct in terms of the required data fields, the field length, and other CBPR plus rules. In this case, we have an error in the execution date and settlement method fields, which is highlighted by the, the red boxes. Hovering over the info button shows the error description and clicking on this button opens up the editor where the messages could be corrected. Once the structural validation errors have been fixed, the process then moves to the machine learning stage. Prior to this test, the model has been pre-trained with 200,000 simulated transactions, including examples of different payment routes and different uses of the address fields. Based on this training data, the machine learning model has identified another issue with this message. Again, the user can view the error, and in this case, also see the statistical confidence score and the expected ISO 20022 error message code. Here, the issue is that the creditor bank is expected to reject this transaction because all the address information has been collapsed into the street name field. 
other creditor banks might accept this but there is a 99.99% probability that this bank will reject it for this particular reason. Once again, the message editor allows the user to correct the errors. And resubmit and the service now returns a positive response indicating that the transaction should now succeed. An AI ML based service served over APIs and continually trained with industry and bank data to score the completeness and correctness of payments data has the ability to ease adoption and provide a new platform to revolutionize payments. So congratulations again to all the winners and a huge thank you to all those who participated. I want to thank all the judges and of course our partners at SWIFT for helping make this event possible. As a wrap up to this session, my team put together a very short video on some of the other work that we are doing at the BAS Innovation Hub in Singapore to help support these initiatives. I hope you find this video informative and would invite any interested central banks fintechs or payment service providers to reach out and see how we might collaborate on these projects or any other future opportunity in the cross-border payments, central bank digital currency, or regtech space. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the BIS Innovation Summit. Sending money from one person to another has never been easier. That's if you're sending money within the same country. If you're sending money overseas, it can feel like an eternity. But why? Money is just data. Why does it take longer to send money overseas than it does to send an email? Well, there are three reasons. First, one currency needs to be swapped for another. Second, compliance checks are needed to prevent illicit payments. And third, Different payment systems speak different languages. These steps can result in costs, frictions, and delays. Payment innovators and organizations like SWIFT are developing better solutions and standards for data and messaging. But there's still more that we can do. So, here at the BIS Innovation Hub in Singapore, we're exploring other options. One possibility is to link the successful fast payment systems that many countries use today for domestic payments. In fact, Singapore and Thailand are already connecting their fast payment systems, making money transfers happen within seconds. The European Central Bank and the Swedish Riksbank are also exploring ways they can achieve instant payments between euros and kroners. It's a positive step forward, but linking countries one by one can quickly become a challenge. Two countries need just one link, but four countries need six links, and 20 countries need 190 links. This gets complicated and expensive. That's why the BIS Innovation Hub is developing a blueprint for a fast, cross-border payments platform. We call it Nexus for short. Nexus does two things. First, it connects multiple fast payment systems in different countries, thereby allowing them to speak to each other through standardized data-rich payment messages. Second, it coordinates currency exchange between financial institutions. That means the existing domestic fast payment systems could start to provide equally fast cross-border payments, all without the sender's bank or the fast payment system having to touch another currency. Nexus is a blueprint to connect the multiple fast payment systems that exist today. But looking to the future, we're imagining a world where multiple central banks issue digital currencies. How would these diverse CBDCs speak to each other? And how can we redesign these networks to be open, transparent and resilient? This is something we'll explore in our next project, Dunbar. We're working with the Monetary Authority of Singapore and other central banks to ensure that technology on the horizon will make it easier than ever for both businesses and individuals to send money across borders. Stay tuned.